I want to begin by introducing you to my favorite letter. Now, you might not think that that's a letter in our alphabet. To me, that's an important one, Delta, because it means change. And we live at a time of incredible change. Change has never happened at such a rapid rate before, and it means there's some awesome and exciting possibilities ahead. When we think about change, to me, there's three drivers that we need to consider when we're looking at these opportunities. The first driver is the idea of the big five. Mobility, security, and I'll say security and privacy, cloud computing services, social media, and big data. Many companies that are looking ahead down the road and predicting what will happen in technology are actually referring to these five attributes as unstoppable forces. These forces will shape what happens in the future and they're going to impact what happens in the future whether we want them to or not. The second driver is that the online culture is really of a participatory nature. If you take a look and just watch what people do online, they're busy, they communicate, collaborate, they contribute, they create, they share, and they reflect. And that's not all. If you take a look at what happens in just 60 seconds on the internet, it's absolutely incredible when you start to slice and dice how many blog posts per minute, how many tweets, how many text messages, how many email messages, how many collaborative documents were edited. It's going up astronomically quickly. And so to me, this is what is of real interest. And the third driver, to me, it's the one that sort of transcends and brings all of these things together, is the idea of connecting. Never before have we been able to connect across the globe in such an easy and efficient way. That means there's always new possibilities. <coughs> now, one of my favorite things is taking note of a person's, what we call, coming out of the cave uh, journey, or perhaps it's a moment, that time when they move from being less of a technology user to becoming connected. And I thought tonight I might share a couple of highlights from my own journey. I've always been a little bit of a telecommunications buff. Um, in fact, I remember the old modem days well, and some of you might uh, remember that somewhat annoying sound that modems made when they connect. But I like that sound. In fact, I still use that as the ringtone on my iPhone. <laughs> um, and there's something to me that just makes that sound special. It's like I'm connected, and that's great. So back for me around 2007, there were two or three events that happened. Uh, one was uh, in the early days of uh, video conferencing across networks. There was a group of us that were meeting, uh, and, and the organization was called Ontario Meetups. And we used to get together once a month and just talk about educational issues. But it was so neat because it wasn't just people in our board in those days, it was people across Ontario talking about Ontario educational needs. So that was a great experience for me. And the second thing was meeting uh, Doug Peterson, who's a well-known uh, educator from the Windsor area. And Doug and I had many conversations about some of the things that were new at that time, blogging and Twitter. And I remember, I liked the idea of blogging and sharing, but I never considered myself much of a writer. In fact, I'm sure my high school English teacher would be absolutely thrilled to know that I actually like writing now, and I look forward to sharing in that format. <coughs> and lastly, for me, I had a chance to work with Cheryl Nussbaum Beach and, and work on online community building. What did that look like in terms of meeting people online, building trust, building relationships, and moving some agenda forward? Well, for me, all of those things really lit the fire, and I knew that was it being connected was important, and there was no way back that this was the direction forward. And this has become an important part of all of the different kinds of things that I'm involved with, both in work with the school board and things that are, are related to that. Now, I think it's also important to recognize that connectivity and access to being able to connect 
isn't the same in every country. And recently I enjoyed a family trip to China and actually took the time, took a few minutes, there we were out on the Great Wall, and we actually recorded a little two-minute video that highlighted for me an underscore the importance of being able to connect and taking advantage of that. It's not something that we can take lightly. And so as we look at moving this agenda forward, I realize now it's so important to provide entry points, to receive and give information, to contribute to the learning of others, to use your voice, to share your professional practice. And this has really become that driving force for me in all of the work that we do. Now at this point, I want to take a moment to introduce uh, my good friend, colleague, and connected leader, Donna Miller Fry, through a video which we recorded here last Thursday during our dress rehearsal to continue the story. So I want to begin by putting my story into a little bit of context. So when you grow up, and this is what you see out your window every morning, you get to experience the great things like lots of open space and no smog days, but you start to wonder a little bit about what it is that you're missing. So when I grew up and went into education, I would often be asked, what is the one thing that keeps you going? And for me, it's access. Luckily, we live in a world now where access is much easier. If you have a device and you have access to the internet, any learner can learn from the very best teachers. Any learner can be involved in the very best conversations. We think about learners very differently now. We don't look at them like date-stamped products that are just being processed through a system. We think of them as individuals with special learning needs, with different interests, and with different passions. And that's great, but it makes life a little bit more challenging for their teachers. So teachers don't just go home at night anymore and prepare a lesson and then stuff it into kids' heads the next day. They have to think of kids as individuals, and they have to think of learning and teaching as a much more complex process. So how do they learn how to teach? Well, teachers, just like students, want to own their learning and things like ed camps, where teachers get together on Saturdays for free and decide what they're going to learn and who they're going to learn it with, have become hugely popular. And because a lot of these learners are also connected to the outside world, as they're building knowledge together, they're also pulling in the people that help them learn on a daily basis, 24-7, that are outside and unable to attend. And in fact, other educators around the world are catching on to the idea that ed camps are going on, and they're dialing in to watch the Twitter feed and to watch the live stream that might be happening so that they can learn from ed camps as well. The problem comes, of course, when the teachers go back to their own school, their own learning environment, and they have all these great ideas. But maybe the other people in their learning environment don't understand the ideas quite as well, and it's hard for them to implement it. If we think about learning as a system, the people who are making the decisions around how learning is going to move forward have to have that capacity and those connections to be able to make great decisions. How do we do that? How do we make sure that when a leader needs to make a decision about learning, they can contact the people that they know have capacity or they have a better idea of how the system works themselves? We need to create the conditions for learning in Ontario so that leaders feel very comfortable connecting and building their own capacity. What does that look like? Well, we need to create something that allows learners to enter at any place that they happen to be in their learning, that supports lots of different interests, that is sustainable, is flexible, is safe, and really respects the fact that school and system leaders are incredibly busy people with incredibly large number of priorities. So our answer to this is to create a massive open online community that's directed at the needs of school and system leaders. Over the last month, we've been able to convince several of them to take the time to share their learning and make their learning visible on the blog space. We want to keep making Ontario a place where people feel comfortable to share their stories, no matter what position they're in in education. Now, in this last slide, these digital faces might represent students, teachers, school administrators, or perhaps system administrators. 
But it's important to think that they are a connected collective, and they're stronger and smarter together. After all, the smartest person in the room is, in fact, the room. And connecting and collaborating is so important in how we solve problems and teach students today. So to close out, we must own our own learning. It's important to make our thinking visible, and we need to contribute to the learning of others. It's something that you have to live and bring alive. And so I close out with a question for you. What actions can you take to become a, a connected leader? Thank you. <laughs>